Hello, hello, it is Ryder, and today the Lord wanted me to come on and share another prophetic word with you, and the title of this message is Overcoming Lust. Overcoming Lust. And, you know, this message is for the children of God, those who have repented of their sins and accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, believing that he has died on the cross to pay the price for all of our sins. You know, and he was placed in a tomb and rose on the third day and is seated at the right hand of the Father, crowned in glory and majesty. Um, but with all that being said, I know the Lord wants me to open up with a prayer. Father God, I just thank you for this day. And I thank you for bringing us together just through the power of the internet and these social media platforms that you've given us. And Father God, I just ask that you give myself and everybody that hears this message the strength and the courage to overcome the lust that is in their life, to overcome the desires of the flesh that are in their life. Because we know that the things of the world that we might love, they don't come from you, but they come from the ruler of this world who is the devil. And Father God, I ask that you remove anything in our lives that is not pleasing to you. I ask that you remove anything from our hearts and our minds that you did not plant there whether it is like sexual immorality and desires for that, whether it is lust for excessive eating, whether it is lust for idolatry, whether it is, you know, like being obsessed with video games, desiring excessive sleep, you know, materialism, rampant materialism, all of those things, Father God, we know that you did not put in our hearts and in our minds, but they come from the enemy, they come from the world, they come from the devil. So Father God, I ask that you break all of these chains off of all of us right now, off of all of your children, so we can travel lightly, because we know that we have everything that we need, which is you living in us, Father God. You've already given us everything that we need, so why would we need to fill ourselves with anything of this world? So Father God, I ask right now that you break off all of these chains, that you break off all of these desires desires of the flesh right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now with all that being said, you know, the Lord wanted me to come on today and talk about overcoming lust. And, you know, like, I'm not struggling with, like, sexual immorality, but I've been struggling with, like, desiring other things. Like, mainly there's been this video game that I was playing on my phone, and God told me he doesn't want me to be playing that, you know, at least not now, because he told me that my time is valuable, and that's not a good use of my time, and I was upset about that, because I'm like, oh, I like this game, I used to play it a lot when I was younger, and it's kind of one of those, like, card games, and I had so many cool cards and characters and stuff, and I was going through my old collection, and God's like, no. He made it very clear that he didn't want me to be playing it and that it wasn't good for me and that I have things I got to do and that's not a good use of my time, you know. And I think that a lot of us, you know, as we're getting into the summer, like it is the summer where I live, you know, I think it's very easy to like fall into temptation, you know, because we see other people, they're going out, they're having a good time, they're going to the beach, they're going out to eat, they're going on vacation, they're traveling, they're doing all these things. But the thing, though, is that we shouldn't be desiring what other people have, you know, because we shouldn't, because those are the things of the world. They don't come from God, you know. So when we see other people traveling, when we see other people, you know, they're going out to these fancy restaurants to eat, they're going to the beach, they're doing all these fun things, they have the latest and greatest technology, they have all this stuff, you know, it's like we shouldn't be envious of them, you know, because we have everything that we need. God has given us clothes to wear, he's given us, like, food to eat, you know, like, I have, like, you know, some oranges and granola bars right now for breakfast and I have more food in my bag you know it's like we have clothes to wear we have food to eat we have a roof over our heads you know usually um and you know we have God living in us and our salvation is secure if we've repented and accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior so we know that when we die we're gonna get to go to heaven and be with God forever so in reality it's like what more could we need do we really need that excessive sleeping that excessive amount of food those video games? Do we really, like, need to be traveling? Do we need new clothes? Do we need a new phone? Do we need these things, or is it just stuff that we want? Because God will give us what we need, but it's not always what we want. And that's something I've found throughout my life. If there's something that I have absolutely needed, God has always pulled through for me. But if it's something that I wanted, where it's like, oh, like, I want a new Bible, even though I have plenty of Bibles at home in different translations, or I'm like, oh, you know, like, I'd love, like, some new 
clothes even though I have plenty of clothes or new shoes even though I have shoes like you know it's like that like God doesn't always do that for me sometimes he'll give me things that I want but usually it's like he'll come through when I need it but he doesn't give you everything that you want you know and I think sometimes the message in that that God is saying is that he's given us everything that we need you know and there is a scripture passage that the Lord wanted me to share and I realized as he pointed out to me this morning just very quickly it's it's from first John uh, 2 verses 15 to 17 and it's called on not loving the world you know and it says do not love the world or anything in the world if anyone loves the world love for the father is not in them for everything in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the father but from the world the world and its desires pass away but whoever does the will of god lives forever for this is the word of the lord thanks be to god and here's the thing with stuff like this and what god made it clear to me about that video game i was playing on my phone and it's like he said you know like it's like the game isn't the issue the problem is that it was getting in between me and him because i was getting a bit obsessed with this game i was playing it a lot you know when i had downtime and i wasn't spending as much time in prayer and that's a problem you know and i realized you know when i was reading some stuff from the book of jeremiah like there was a lot of like talk about idol worship and i felt this conviction in my spirit like you know i feel like i've put this game before god and that's idol worship and that's wrong so i i've had to delete the game and not going back to it um at least not for now maybe never um but the thing is like you know when we love these things more than we love god it becomes an idol it takes the place of god and that is breaking the second commandment you know which means like you know like you shall not worship any idols you know and even the first one you shall have no gods before me you know and the thing is like god has done so much for us he came down to this world in human form you know he lived a very humble life you know like he came down as jesus he healed the sick he cleansed the lepers he cast out demons and he submitted himself to the most gruesome and painful death possible which was death on a cross to pay the price for all of our sins so that we could be saved and be able to spend eternity with the father in heaven and not go to the horrible place hell you know god came and he gave everything for us and it's wrong to put anything ahead of him because god made everything you know and it's like should we love the gifts more than the gift giver you know like these oranges you know like the food that i have you know like they're a gift from god but should i love these more than i love god who gave them to me you know should i love the gift more than the gift giver you know so I think that's really important in this time you know i know that the lord has mentioned you know that this is a season of distraction the enemy wants to distract us whether it's with drama in our lives whether it's with financial problems whether it's like with physical aches and pains you know like new people trying to pop up in your life and you know like stir things up you know it could be all kinds of things even like you know like false relationships someone coming and you want to start a relationship with them but they're not your kingdom spouse you know like they're not the person that god has ordained for you to marry if you're meant to marry you know so this is just a season where the enemy is just trying to distract everybody and it's important to just stay focused on God, put him first, put him above everything else and do not love anything that's here, anything in the world more than you love God, you know, and that's something I have to remember myself as well, you know, like I can't love food or sleep or clothes or a video game or anything more than God, you know, like that's wrong. So, you know, I just pray, Father God, that this message reaches who it is meant to reach at the right time and that they are able to heed these words that you have spoken through me and that they are able to turn away from their sins. And I pray that you give all of us, including myself, the strength and the courage to stay on the narrow path so that we do not run this race in vain. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With all that being said, I hope that this message was helpful. So for now, take care, stay safe, have a wonderful rest of the day, and know that Jesus loves you, and I love you too. Bye-bye.